Hey guys, for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to place points in space and then create a series of planar surfaces to connect all those points and build a closed polygon. Okay, so this is going to be similar to an actual exercise that I give in class. Uh, but really, the goal here is just to show you one way of, uh, of building a, an object based off of a point cloud, kind of. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start, and you'll see here I'm in my full perspective view. Um, and, and so I'm going to start by just putting a, a random assortment of points in space. Okay, so here's your point uh, button, but you can also just type point, and that's what I'm going to do. I press enter. And it's going to ask me where I want the location of that first point uh, to be. So for this first point, I'm actually just going to choose something random. OK, um, you'll notice here immediately that that uh, random point is randomly placed on the X, Y axis, but it is on uh, zero level Z, right? Because uh, as you know, as I've mentioned before, uh, the default is for Rhino to place anything that you uh, put randomly onto that uh, that plane, you know, OK? So I'm going to just going to place here, and I'm going to put four points sort of randomly uh, all on our ground plane, OK? So uh, all right, so we've got four points. Now let's say I want to start building, and I want to add additional points. and uh, and put them somewhere in space, uh, but now actually change the vertical axis. So I have multiple ways of doing that. I can actually just press enter again. Remember, if you just do that and it brings up your last command. So now I'm going to place an additional point. In this case, I'm going to tell it where I want it. So I'm going to say uh, 6, 4, 8. And then you'll see now it has placed that point right there. OK, so uh, now that one is the, our first point to be located in space. So that's one way to put points in space is I can actually give my X, Y, Z coordinates uh, to it and it'll place it. Right. So I'll do that again. I'm going to say place a point. And in this case, I'm going to do negative six comma five comma seven and all right and there you see there's that point right so now we've we've uh placed another point there right okay and now let's say i also want to just take a point place it here's another way to actually move i'm going to randomly place it right so that that point now is somewhere but it is still on that ground plane and i can actually now move that point vertically and to do that again you type move and then you select vertical here, or you just type V, enter. And now you can give it a vertical dimension. So now I'm going to say this one, I want it to be at four. OK, so you can start seeing how I'm starting to build this set of points. I'm going to actually add one more here, and I'm going to move this point eight. OK, perfect. All right, so now I've got a point cloud. Uh, and now I can start making uh, planes. In order to make planes, uh, I'm going to show you first the, the, the way to make and make sure that these are actual planes and not surfaces. And uh, if you remember the difference between a, a plane and a surface is that a surface can um, have points that are not on that same plane, right? So that they're, they're essentially uh, creating a surface that has curvature. Right. And so if first, if we want to start and do it correctly, we'll start out by just making planar surfaces. Uh, and I'll show you a way to do that and to know that it is correct. And so in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our polyline and we're going to go to our polyline. And now we're just going to connect the dots. So remember, you have to have your O snaps on and you have to have uh, some of these O snaps selected. In this case, uh, those are my standard settings. And so I'm going to go and snap from point uh, to point to point. And then once I'm done and I wanted to just to close that polyline, I'm going to type C and then enter or spacebar. OK. And so now I have one closed 
uh, polyline. Okay, you'll know you'll notice that this first polyline that I made is just connecting three points, and that's because I know that any three points define a plane, right? And so now I can grab that line, and I can type planar surface. That's R F. Enter, and you'll see that based off of that closed polyline, it will make the planar surface that belongs to that captured polyline. Okay, so that's how I'm going to make my first uh, plane. Okay, so let's do that again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and here grab this polyline. Now I'm going to grab the four points that are on the ground plane. Type C. Now I can grab that, do the same thing, planar surface, press enter, and you'll see that it makes another planar surface. Okay, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna I can do that again. I'm gonna do that kind of quickly here for the next few. I'm gonna do that one, and I'm gonna do this one. Okay. And I'm going to do this one right here. And here I'll show you some, a, a quick trick. So now I've got that closed polyline, this closed polyline and this closed polyline, I can actually select them all at the same time and type planar surface, and it will make and it will make all three of those, right? So you can start to see how we're starting to enclose our volume, okay? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one more time here. And now I'm going to try to show you what happens if you try to connect four points that are not all on the same plane. Okay, so let's say I go ahead and grab this and now I'm going to select this point, this point, this one, this one, and now I, curl, I close it. I've created a closed polyline, right? But you can very clearly see that they're not on, all on the same plane. And so when I go to planar surface, and I type planar surface, press enter. It says here, you'll see no faces were made. Curves must be closed and planar, okay? So you'll get an error. Rhino will give you an error if it knows that that is not gonna create a planar surface. Now that's not to say that we couldn't make a surface out of this, right? But it's important to note that the, the difference that now we know that those four points will never make one single plane, okay? So, for example, if we did want to close it, now knowing that, uh, that these are not going to be a planar surface, but a different type of surface, we could, for example, select to do a loft, and then loft between this edge and this edge, and press enter, and you'll see, I can type okay, and you'll see we're now gonna actually create a surface there, right? But you can see that that surface clearly has curvature. In fact, that's a type of surface that's called a hypar, right? A hyperbolic paraboloid, okay? But it is a perfect surface. It is actually geometrically accurate. It goes edge to edge. And so I can now continue here and I can actually go ahead and I'm gonna using, uh, uh, that information, I'm going to build another here, another closed polyline, another planar surface. Perfect. And now I can actually create one more hyperbolic paraboloid and close off this object. Okay, so again, I'm going to type loft and I'm going to select to loft between this surface edge. And this surface edge, and it's important that for lofts, you uh, if if you want to make a high par, 
you have to create, you know, choose opposing rails, press enter. And then you see actually if it's an inverted one. So to align uh, the curves, I can actually fix that. So I can select here. Uh, there we go. And I click OK. And there you go. So now based off of that sort of cloud of points, we've created both planar surfaces and non-planar surfaces to create a, in a closed polygon. Now, it's, this closed polygon is still made up of all of the independent surfaces. And so if I want to actually uh, make sure that it's all joined, I would actually, or, or closed off and together, I would grab everything, now type join, press enter. And now you'll see anytime I select any part of it, it will select all of it. Okay. Uh, as one final thing, actually, I can actually check to make sure that it's a closed polygon. And in order to do that, I would select the object and type dupe border. And what that's actually going to ask is it's trying to duplicate any open border condition or any open boundary. So if I've typed enter, and again, here it says no borders duplicated, I know that it is a closed polygon and it is, uh, and, and it's ready to be, uh, in this case, you could even 3D print this if you want to. Now it's ready to be 3D printed. But we'll talk about 3D printing in another tutorial, okay? So there you go. That's one of the first ways that you can learn to make objects in Rhino. See you guys in the next one.